Okay, let's start. So yeah, so hopefully you guys uh, revised the last two lectures. So I guess I don't have to do a long recap to refresh your memory after this holiday break. But so let me just quickly do a small recap so that everyone is on the same page. So we have been looking at the idea of noise shaping. The principle is uh, simple. The idea is to take the quantization noise of an ADC, which has a flat power spectral density, and shape its frequency spectrum so that in the frequency range of interest, the noise is suppressed, right? And in the case we considered the input signal is a low pass signal, where the range of frequency that are that is interest to us is zero to some low frequency. So the noise transfer function is like a high pass filter. And you know that I mean uh, this noise shaping has to be combined along with oversampling. And after high pass shaping, we have to eliminate the out of band noise to get the full benefit, right? So then we looked at the delta sigma modulator, which has a structure like this. It's basically a negative feedback loop. So here, what is the signal transfer function? This is L of Z. It's L by one plus L. And for low frequencies, what is it approximately equal to? It's approximately equal to 1 which is the signal range of frequencies also and what is the noise transfer function it's 1 by 1 plus L right cool and in the last class we saw uh, essentially what happens if you keep increasing the order of this high pass filtering so what happens yeah so instability happens essentially if you look at this signal if I call this y y will be the input plus NTF minus 1 times Q, everything in uh, frequency domain. So if you keep increasing the order of the NTF, what happens? OBG. Ah, what is OBG? Yeah, yeah, what, what is it? Uh, NTF evaluated at the band edge, which is omega equal to pi or z equal to minus 1. So the out of band gain of this guy increases. So which means the gain imparted by this fellow to the quantization noise at high frequencies increases that basically limits your maximum stable amplitude for your input. So that is why in practice as I mentioned we restrict the order to less than or equal to 4 and even then to have a reasonable MSA you keep the OBG to 1 .5. Ah, that is for 1.5 for single bit usually for others it is usually 3 but it is not a hard constraint you can go slightly higher also right but uh, yeah for as you mentioned for a single bit quantizer this has to be within 1.5. Simply because for single bit quantizer, this itself will be Q itself will be large, right? Cool. And that uh, made us ask the question: How do we control the out of band gain? Because our NTF is of the form one minus the inverse power n. So how did we change the OBG? How did we control the OBG? I mean, for, for first of all, what is the out of band gain for this guy? Uh, two, power two power n. So how did we change the out of band gain from two power n to required value? Yeah, we changed the pole, so the NTF now became power n by say d of z inverse, right? So if I do that, then uh, if this was the original NTF, at out of band frequencies is smaller, but what happens at the low frequencies? This slightly increased. So how does this, this go as, for small values of omega, how does this go as? This goes as omega power n. And how does this go as? Alpha. Yeah, alpha times omega power n. What is alpha? Right. Basically, this as we saw, this one by d of z inverse is a low pass filter. So to find the boost at low frequencies, you can evaluate the gain of this guy at any frequency. Simplest thing is to find that omega equal to zero, and that z equal to one. Right. Cool. And at the end of the last class, I also mentioned that you can, uh, instead of keeping all your zeros of the NTF at omega equal to 0 like this, yeah, so let me just draw this. So if this is your band of frequencies which is of interest to you, you want to minimize the noise power within this band. 
so instead of keeping all the zeros at omega equal to 0 you can position the zero at an optimal location so that the ntf does something like this right and the location of this guy will indeed depend on the bandage and the bandage is essentially pi by osr or pi by m so is that fine nyquist frequency is fs by 2 which corresponds to discrete time frequency of pi when you oversample it fs by 2m this is pi by m so the location of that zero will also depend on the oversampling ratio as i mentioned i'll give it as an exercise for you to work out later but yeah the bottom line is if you have if you want to specify an ntf let's uh, list out what are the things you need to know first you need to specify what is the order you want but just specifying the order is not enough because that will have obg of 2 power n so you also need to specify what is the out of band gain you want and as you know the out of band gain also depends on the number of levels because for a single bit you know it's 1.5 so you also need to know what is the number of levels in the quantizer that you have right and in addition you can you have this provision of optimizing the zero right so you can have an optimal zero and the location of the optimal zero depends on the oversampling ratio right so you need all these information to actually define a particular ntf okay so as i mentioned i mean you know in practice you don't sit and calculate what the ntf is you use uh, automated toolbox in matlab but as a designer you should know if let us say you have a particular ntf number of levels are required because the out of band gain depends on the number of levels also right for example if we have a one bit quantizer which is two levels your obg is 1.5 isn't it if you have more number of levels yeah yeah so yeah as i mentioned i mean in, uh, in practice what you should know is if you have a particular ntf and let us say you are not able to meet the required signal to quantization noise ratio you should know what you should change to get the required value that's all right so maybe let's see let's do a quick uh, example today so let's take some example specs right so let us say i have been given an enob of 16 bits okay and let us say my signal bandwidth is 24 kilohertz so if enob is 16 bits what is my sndr roughly 16 sir 96 so around 97 db you have right 6n plus 1.7 right so and remember this uh, this is sndr but in practice you don't want distortion so you want this to be completely dominated by the noise because you don't want distortion and you know that the noise indeed consists of both quantization noise and thermal noise so we are looking at a very high resolution adc so what do you think will be choosing i mean what do you think will be chosen as the dominant noise in this thermal noise because no not really right see uh, the deal is thermal noise depends on kd by c right so if you want to reduce the thermal noise if you want to keep this really small you have to have a large value for the capacitor that's going to increase the power consumption directly right but on the other hand in delta sigma reducing quantization noise is trivial because you can simply go and change the out of band gain or number of levels and stuff it's much easier no i'll say not easier it is uh, more power efficient to keep the quantization noise to a small level than thermal noise whereas for very low resolution what you'll find is the capacitance value required might be very small for low resolution in that case you can keep the thermal noise to be dominant i mean thermal noise to be small we looked at in pipe and adc let's say you take a 6 bit adc or something you'll find that maybe the capacitance value read will be i don't know 1 femt of farad or something for example so in that case i can let's say use 5 femt of farad of a capacitor because sometimes the parasitic itself might be so large that it won't hurt you so much to use a slightly larger capacitor right but if you go to high resolution the capacitors required might be in the ranges of hundreds of femto farad of or few pico farad there if you want to keep the noise even smaller you have to increase the capacitance value which means you'll have to burn more power so for high resolutions usually this is the case this guy is much greater than this as a thumb rule you keep it to be 10 times so my overall signal to noise ratio is 97 db and i'm saying i'll keep the quantization noise to be 10 times smaller than the thermal noise 
So what will be my signal to quantization noise ratio roughly? Is question clear? I mean my total signal to noise ratio is dominated only by thermal noise, right? And the total thing you want is around 97 dB. Right? And what I am saying is my quantization noise power is 10 times smaller than the thermal noise. So if I just calculate the signal to quantization noise ratio, how much do you think it will be roughly? It should be 97 plus 10. 97 plus 10, right? I mean it's not minus 10, it should be plus 10. Quantization noise is 10 dB smaller, which means signal to quantization noise ratio will be 10 times larger, right? Because is that clear? So my total noise is roughly this guy, right? Yes, correct, correct. I mean that is for any, I mean if you, if you are given an E knob, maximum signal to noise ratio you can measure is this much. I mean you calculate it based on signal to quantization noise ratio but the definition is this, right? You can, you can have a 16 bit, I mean 10 bit ADC but it turns out you can measure let us say some SNR from the ADC. From that you back calculate what is effective bits you have. Is that okay? So you first calculate what is your this SN, SNDR you get. From this you back calculate what is your enum. That's how it's specified. Is that okay? So what is my SQNR in this case then? Yeah, around 107, say uh, 107 dB, let's say round it to 110 dB or something roughly. So uh, first, your first goal is at a system level you have to design, decide all these guys, right? So you have to decide what NTF you want to use. Okay? And again, we'll use MATLAB toolbox. But to start off, let's take some assumptions, right? So let us say I use a single bit quantizer. Sir, wait. Ah. So, it is 110 dB you want to design. Right. So you, uh, according to this, what is the enum of according to 110 dB? You will design for that, and then you will get. No, no. See, we uh, you know. You you design for an SQNR of 110 dB, huh. right? For this you will require number of bits from the digital filter, right? Correct. No, yeah, okay. That you decide based on this guy. This is enough, right? 97 dB. Okay. And his question is, I mean, finally you have the delta sigma and then blah blah blah. You have a digital filter and then this guy. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed, we saw that the uh, number of bits you have in the digital filter decides the effective resolution here. His question is whether you should choose this guy to be giving a, a thing of 110 dB or 97 dB. It is okay to give 97 dB, but you should also make sure that it is not so, I mean, it should not be so bad that this is not able to filter out of band noise. See, finally, at what you will get is this, right? You will have quantization noise like this. Along with this, you will have thermal noise like this. Your digital filter, I mean, so, so the total noise will look like this. Right? Your digital filter should be able to chop off this entire portion completely. After uh, this is a log scale, you are log scale. Yeah. After filtering off this portion completely, the total noise power here should match to this. That's all. Is that okay? Cool. So this is the deal. So we'll start with. We'll try to get an NTF that uh, gives us this. SQNR and to start off we will have to make some assumptions and start. So let us say I assume that I have a single bit uh, quantizer. So in that case what is my OBG I should have? No. Uh, OBG should be less than 1.5. So let us start with 1.5 and I will choose, uh, you know, I will take a third order example and let us say I choose my OSR to be 64 roughly. I mean some random choice we will see, right? The net is there, maybe I can quickly show here. MATLAB. Let's see. Good. So again, uh, I'll just define uh, basic stuff. OSR is 64. OBG is 1.5. Okay. And there is a nice command here called synthesize NTF. This gives you the required NTF. This is the order, third order. This is the oops, sorry. This is the OSR. And this specifies whether you are looking at a low pass signal or I mean in our case we have considered the signal is from 0 to some uh, 
low frequency, right? We can also have a case where the signal is at some other frequency. In that case, your NTF will not have notches at DC. Right now, your NTF is looking like this, right? Because your signal bandwidth is somewhere here. You can also have a case where your signal is at some other frequency. In that case, you can design your NTF to be like this. Because your signal bandwidth is somewhere here. So that zero specifies, uh, specifies that your signal is at low frequencies. And this is the out of band gain. And this argument uh, says whether you want to have the optimized zeros or not. Whether you want to spread out the zero to some other location to optimize the noise power. <coughs> so this is the NTF we get. So now the next thing is to find out if this, what is the SQNR you can get from this. Again, uh, functions are there. So I'll just use it. So there is a simulate SNR command. So you just give the NTF OSR. And here I'm giving the ranges of amplitudes because now I have to give sinusoids at different amplitudes and simulate and find out what is the SNR I get, right? So here I'm giving amplitudes from, sorry, amplitudes uh, starting from minus 20 dB full scale to 0 dB full scale, okay? 0 dB full scale means you are giving the full scale, right? If it is... This is 0.1 to 1, right? Yeah, I mean, zero, uh, yeah. Basically, minus 20 dB full scale is 10 times smaller than your full scale amplitude. Mm. 0 dB full scale is your full scale amplitude and so on, right? And stepping, I mean, minus 20, minus 19, so on till 0. That's how it takes. So, around 21 amplitudes I have taken. And rest of it, I'll leave it for now. So, you get a bunch of SQNR for different amplitude. We can check what is the maximum SQNR. Right now, we get this only 82. But our target is 110 dB, right? So this NTF is not doing the job, yeah. right? So what can I change here? It's not visible. Okay, okay, hold on. Let's see. Yeah. Right. Right now I chose a third order. OSR was 64. OBG was 1.5. So I want to. This is not good enough, right? I get only 82 dB. I want 110 dB or so. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We can increase the order. I will make it fourth order, keeping everything same. I will do the same thing and find max SQNR, it's only 91. I mean, the, ideally you would have expected increasing order will change a lot, but remember that we are keeping the out of band gain to be same, right? Earlier we had a third order case. For a third order, the OBG, ideally OBG is how much for a third order case? From 8, we bring it to 1.5. If you go to fourth order, what is the OBG uh, ideally? 16. From here, we will bring it to 1.5 again. Yeah, here the reduction from 8 to 1.5 is, I mean, 16 to 1.5 is much larger than 8 to 1.5. So, which means your inbound noise power will increase even higher. Okay. So, that is why you are not getting so much of benefit. So, what else I can increase? OBJ can't increase, I am 1.5 is max, right? What is the other thing? OSR, right? I, I mean, for or other thing is for a given bandwidth, use larger sampling ratio, right? I mean, that, that should actually be beneficial because let us say I have a third order NTF, right? At low frequencies, it goes as omega q or alpha times omega q. So, what will be the uh, integrated noise power roughly? If let us say, Pi by m is the signal bandwidth. What is the integrated noise power within the bandwidth? Uh, it is like delta by pi. Into pi into uh, pi by m to the power three. Three. It, it won't be three. What is it? Three. Seven. Seven. Okay. Okay. I mean ma ma magnitude NTF square, square, and this has to be integrated from zero to pi by m uh. with delta square by twelve pi. So we'll have whole power seven. Into one by seven. Alpha square yeah. Okay. Sorry. One by seven. That's so alpha square is also there. Yeah. So the thing is, you this thing goes as m power seven, right? If you increase m by two times, you are getting an improvement of two power seven, right? Two power seven is what? One twenty eight, mm. right? That is a lot, isn't it? So it is uh, easier to actually do this. So what we'll do is we'll uh, increase the OSR. Right now sixty four. I'll make it two times. Let us say. I'll do the same thing. Find SQNR. Yeah. Now I get maximum SQNR is 120. 
that's more than enough i mean you can either stick to this or let us say i want to reduce it to 110 right which one okay you want to make the order 3 that will not work i can show you that reduces to much larger amount It's 103. Right, so third order is not sufficient. We have to do with fourth order. But I mean, if you do it fourth order, you're getting much higher value than what you need. So uh, this is okay. You can stick with this, or let us say you want to reduce it slightly. What you can do? Yeah. I mean, or, uh, changing the order is not helping. What, what else? What are the other things I can change? I mean, now I want to reduce the SQNR slightly. What are the knobs you can play around with? Look at the arguments here. What are the things you can change? I mean, OBG. I'm see. OSR. It was 64, and we made it two times higher. For make when we made it two times higher, it is 120 dB. You want it slightly smaller. What can you do? You can. You don't have to go it two times. Maybe slightly you can increase. That is one option. What about OBG? No. If I increase, I can slightly reduce. I am limited by saying that maximum is 1.5. Maybe I can slightly reduce. Right. So in this case, I'll uh, change the OBG slightly. Say 1.35. And then I'll do this. now it's close enough to what you get right i mean a better solution will be actually to reduce the over sampling ratio because remember that if you have a large over sampling ratio your sampling rate is going to be large right so which means your circuits have to run at high frequencies so having a small osr is actually nice but let us say we stick to this choice okay so let me use presentation now cuz i'm lazy now okay uh, just a second to use 